Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Galatians 6 9. Let us not become weary from doing good, for at the proper time we will reap the harvest if we do not give up. So just keeping that good feeling given the season's coming up, gonna do wonderful things feeling. So yeah. All right, off the hook, I do have the purple shawl done. It did go Thursday like it was supposed to. I made it on time, yay. Um, I do have a clip, though, that I'm going to put in because I ended up over dyeing it. It was beautiful. Uh, I could tell. So when roommate looked at it, roommate didn't see two separate yarns. When I looked at it, I saw two separate yarns, and that is a me thing. So, therefore, I ended up over dyeing it and getting it to blend a little bit better. Um, it was two separate kinds of wool, but yeah, it was amazing. So, here is that clip. Okay, so I got the retirement shawl done, and I don't know if I'll have it when we podcast, so I'm going to make this little clip just in case. This is the back. Um, I took the two yarns, let me get you the front here, and they didn't mesh as well. I could tell the line of where they were and where they weren't, um, and where they, uh, came together. So I just over dyed it with purple, um, which is originally what I had dyed them with, but I did really deep, rich purple. So, um... I like it. I still have this end. This is all I had left um, after making it, which is perfect. Um, all I have left to do is weave in that end, the one end up in the corner, and there is one for the join. And I haven't haven't found it again. I will find it though, um, and I will weave it in too. So. Other than that, I think it looks amazing. I really like the shape. And turn it. It's long. And I really, I like it. I think it looks good. So, there it is. Okay, yeah. It turned out really nice. Um, I have found... And this is me. I've done it twice now, and I am super excited about it. Um, I like drying them on my form because I can make it dry the way I want the item to shape, and I think it does better than laying it flat. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I have started putting shawls on that form and drying them and being able to place the pattern. And then when you flip it over, you know, it has a tendency to fold wherever I folded it over on the mannequin. So it, it lays better on you when I position it on there to dry. So I have done it twice now and I'm in love with that. So, um, I can't remember if I told you that I got this one done or not. So I got this one off the hook. It's all seamed up, ends woven in. Um, I just put it over my, and then put it up over. I've used it once because it snowed. It, it didn't really snow. It, what they say it was, snizzle, snow drizzle, whatever. Okay, so yeah, last night um, on the way home from work, supposedly... I just saw rain. <laughs> I didn't see any snow. But it is what it is. And it's just rain today. So who knows? Ooh, sorry. Um, so I finished that one and then I also finished the one for the blog. And I just you know me, I still have a little end to weave in there. And I think I have an end on one of these honest with you. Or did I already leave it in? I didn't. No. No, I didn't. Still have the end to weave in. But this is the other freestyle. 
and it is amazing. I'm going to wear it today with a black shirt underneath it because it really pops. Black, so. But I do have to move in the ends first, you know. Have those shown. But, yep, yeah, there's another one. And let's see, I think that's it for off the hook. I've got those two things that, and the shawl that I ended up giving away. I'm sorry, my contact, my eye is dry or my contact acting silly. I'm going to have to go put my drops in. Anyway, um, but yeah, so I finished all of those. I have worked on the table topper. Mm. And I, I don't have enough progress to even show you. I still have that same row, but I'm further along. I didn't work on it a whole lot because I had to get those two. Um, I had to get the purple one done, and I had to get the um, blog one done. So that was a turned into a five-week series, I believe, because I still have one to post with this finished. So, um, and it'll go up every Friday. I've been posting it. So, um, I don't know what I'm going to do after this series. I know I want to probably vlog once a week, but I don't want to do the same thing as a podcast. So who knows what it will be. Um, and it may be other crafts as well. Because I've done a lot of other things this year, not just crochet. <coughs> and I tend to do that, you know, kind of be crafty thing. So, yeah. I might do a tutorial on my shawl pins, but I don't know. Just, I don't know. It is what it is. So, I did start two other things. One silly. So... Um, I got my notification that my next kit had uh, shipped. So I decided I better get this one on the move. Because if you remember, I was like, I'm not starting it until I get that. And then I started those other two things. And So, all right. I have two things to say about this. Um, the first is that I love this pattern, this idea. This is awesome. Number two, not this yarn. And the whole carry along thing and do two color. So this stitch is creating a tight woven texture. And it's amazing. But they have you doing two colors, two rows, and carrying it up the side. And it's a little bit thicker yarn. The yarn itself, and I really didn't think I'd like the way it looked, but it's doing okay. It's a little busy for me. So they sent me the two balls, and this is Stitch Bird Milfage High High. I have no idea what all this is. Okay, it is Lion's Brand. Just saying. And here's the other one. Uh, let me see here. So this is called Parrot, and this one is called Purple Marlin. And the two of them together, first off, I never would have put these two together. Um, not something that I would have done. It doesn't look bad but this is so not me the colors are not me the um they it's just not me and the pattern is great but so if i can explain this every two stitches you carry your yarn up the side okay or every two rows so it's never See here, it's never disconnected, which I get. 
but it also makes this outside very thick. Um, first off, I didn't want to, there, there's several ways to carry up the side. I like to incorporate mine. Okay. I like to do the final stitch with both and then do just this top stitch for the next row. Uh, you can actually just do this and do it, but then it leaves this out here. You, you can just, let me see if I can show this better. Um, when you're doing it, you can actually just lay the yarn beside your two chain and then go from there. Okay. But this is then just a loose string and I don't like that. So I carry it up doing the stitches. I know it looks really busy. You really can't see what you're looking at, but I carry them up. So I don't leave that big long, it just looks like a long stitch, but I like it incorporated in. So when I carry mine up, it tends to make this thicker. The other thing that I'm worried about is you saw I am getting low on these two. Okay. And I pretty soon will have to switch to this. If you know me, you know that I don't tie them together. I join them. Um, and basically, let's see if I can find the other ends and I'll show you. When I'm crocheting and I come to the end of the yarn and I want to add on another color or another whatever, I'm looking for the end of this one. Uh, well, you might not get to see because I can't find the end of this yarn. This is crazy. It has to be right in here. There it is. Okay, so if I come to the end of this yarn and I've got a little tail, I take and I fold that tail in half. Now I'm exaggerating how much I fold in half. I probably do more like this. Okay. And then I take, and I tuck this through here and I just keep crocheting. That is how I've always joined, um, and you just wrap it and keep crocheting with it as if it was one and you don't have ends to weave in. And you guys know I, that's just not my thing. I don't really like weaving in ends, but, um, when I do that with this, because I'm carrying up the side and I've got points where there's two yarn, how thick is this thing going to be? You know, if I have to carry up the side and do one of those to add on on the side stitch that's going to be super thick so i'm a little worried about that it is an amazing textured um scrunchy i mean it's working it beautifully the issue the thing that i have is why not just one so here is what my granny said was a common mistake in crochet or knitting or whatever. She said, as a rule of thumb, don't make your crochet or knitting too busy. If you go for texture, then go for texture. If you go for color, go for color. But if you go for texture and color, the texture gets lost in some of the dramatic colors and some of the color is taken away because you've got this texture in there. So she said, she's, she didn't say they couldn't be done. She said it just needed to be balanced. And some textures and some colors just really shouldn't be done together um, because it makes it a very busy piece. That is what, I think this right here is a prime example of this. I think this could be so beautiful if you didn't have all of this going on, if we had just one color to this, um, and I'm not even saying that these yarns wouldn't work. Okay. These yarns won't work for me because if you know me, these are too bright, but, um, 
I might try it with this. I, I don't like the green in there. But if I was to do it just for me, I would have, instead of two balls of each color, I would probably have done four balls of this. It is still scrunchy and thick, and it's going to provide warmth. And it's got a beautiful rickrack, I guess, design, you'd call it. But if this was done as a solid with a fun, um, thicker yarn, like a chunky, <coughs> not too chunky. But anyway, I just really think this is just too busy of a piece for me. Okay. So I am going to keep this pattern because I'm actually going to try it later by finding some uh, yarn that suits me. Okay. And like I said, I just think this is one of those instances where granny might be onto something that too much color and too much texture make for a very busy piece. Now, if you like busy pieces, this is the one to do. It's called um, Birds of a Feather Cow. And, you know, if you like busy and you think it's beautiful, that is, you see, she wears stuff over her head and she stretches it all out there and looks great. Okay, I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm saying for me, we would have a different kind of yarn in there. Just say it. So, um, I am going to go ahead and finish it. And it might make a great Christmas present to somebody or, you know. Um, so, it may end up being given away just because it's too busy for my likes or my tastes. So, the other thing that I've been working on. It's just, it was a dollar and I thought it was cute. Okay, so it was a sale thing from Mary Maxim. And here's the little gnome. And so far, I still have his feet to do. Okay, so he has no feet. He has no feet, but he's got his belt on. He's got his thing. I still have to um, put the nose and fasten this with the arms. I still have arms to put on there. So that's why this isn't fastening that. It fastens like right there. And you put the arm on. And same thing over here. So this still flips up. But I made a, a hanger for him. So, and you really can't even see the belt. I'm not sure what the point of the belt is because it's under his thing. So I just have to make his feet I have his arms made. That's the thing is wherever they are. Here are his arms. I just have to um, you use the two long tails to um, attach them. So I have his arms here. Just have to put them on. And then I've got the black, which I got to make his feet. And then I have to put on his nose, which is right here. And it's just a bead that I'm going to sew on. So I have his feet and his arms. I probably will attach his arms next. And that way I have the whole top part done. And then I just put on his feet. So I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Uh, I've got some girlfriends that like gnomes. I might just give it to them. But I think he's cute. And for $1.99, come on. It, that pattern was worth it. <laughs> I might not do it with that thick of yarn. I might make it a little bit smaller, but hey, I like it. It's cute. It was a fun mind breaker, um, thoughtless kind of thing. So, uh, it was good to put in between things that I felt rushed to get done and all of that. Uh, okay, let's move on into... Oh. The farmhouse, and that's just because you guys know it is cold outside. I was talking about snow. There's no in the fields. There's no garden. There's no anything. Um, RJ 
Coop is doing better. She went back. Um, we got the little boots, got the medicine on her legs, and it draws it out. She's got one that has an issue, but now all four of her legs are not swollen from compensating with that one. So as she compensates for the one, it was making her other legs out. So now we can figure out what's going on with that leg and get it fixed. Um, so RJ took her over to the vet again to show them the, the improvement in the three legs where the swelling had all gone down, everything was going great, and that the other one was still kind of puffy. So um, I don't know. I think they changed the medicine they gave her, but we'll see. Um, then let's see what else has been going on. So I, I guess farmhouse, RJ's world, whatever you want to call it. I told you last week I was deep cleaning. This weekend, RJ came down and him and roommate got the truck in on Saturday. I had a three day weekend for Veterans Day. And um, that Friday I went and I touched it. And I reaped, um, covered my grays. They were white. My grays are white anymore. It's RJ's fault. Um, did that, went and got groceries because I came home and made a big lasagna. So that the next morning I just had to put it in. Well, Saturday, RJ's girlfriend was supposed to come down and he was going to come here. She had her 30 some 34 year old horse, which is older than she is. It was her first horse. Um, they knew he was getting bad. The vet was like, he's just old. There, there's not a whole lot we can do. So anyway, he went down and she stayed home Saturday to unfortunately have to put him down and bury him. So it was rough. Um, it was rough on her. So Saturday he came down. She didn't make it. Um, and uh, he got the truck in the shop. And then the plan was for Sunday... Me and RJ's girlfriend were going Christmas shopping. We were finished up my Christmas list. I had some very specific things for him. You guys know that I had made that shave bag and all that stuff. So we filled that sucker. <laughs> and we found, I found this really cute little sample thing of high dollar, high end colognes for him. And you put it, the little cartridge in and then it's a little spray thing. So I got him, it came with, I think, five different samples or six different samples. I can't remember. I got him that and it came with a $15 coupon to buy a full size one of your favorite. So I'm going to tell him to pick one and we will go from there because Macy and I just could not. Here's the thing. Women's colognes or women's perfume were out to be smelled so that you could decide which one you liked. We couldn't find any men's samples out so that you could decide. You, you had to take them at face value. I didn't want to take them at face value. I wanted to be able to smell them and see if they stunk. I don't want anything that stinks to give him as a Christmas present. And yeah, they don't have the men's out like that. And it wasn't just at one store, it was at several. Um, there was high-end stores that had it that way, and there was low-end. They would not, they don't have testers of the mints. Hello? Let's face it. Women who shop for their cologne and need to be, yep, that's the one I want. Oh my God, that's foul. Okay, we're the same people shopping for the men's. If we need it for the women's, we need it for the men's. Just my thought. Don't know. Okay. But just a thought. Yeah. So we ended up with this little sampler thing for him. I got him a nice razor. I got him a trim kit so that he can, because in the winter he likes to wear it thicker and it's just a little um, clipper type thing. And then for her, we were at Sally's and she, um, made mention that she, uh, the only thing she needed is she got an, her, she got full time and a raise with benefits and all that stuff at her job. She starts 
yesterday. And she said the only thing she had to get was she had to have her own clippers and <coughs> they have to be cordless. They, they won't let them use corded in the shop. So for Christmas, I picked her up a pair. Um, we were at Sally's and she made reference to, oh, I have this pair. She says, it's my go-to. I love that pair. Well, she has to have two pair because of the sharpening of the blades. She has to have two pair to work full time. I don't know. There, there's something about the shop rules about disinfecting and all this stuff. And she has to have one in the disinfector, whatever, using the other one. And then she trades them out or so. Um, and the shop, she had a pair from school. So that qualifies. But to go full time, she now has to have two legitimate pairs. It's kind of like a um, construction worker. The boss will let you borrow their tools for a while. But if you're going to be a construction worker, you have to invest in your own tools. They expect you to come with your tools. If you're the first, if they're your first job, and they'll tell you, "Hey, I don't have." A lot of the bosses will let you borrow, but then you have to go and invest in. That's just the way construction works. Well, the hair salon business works the same way. And she's actually a men's hair salon. So she likes it. Anyway, so we did the Christmas shopping. Got everything except the tapered candles because she Googled. Literally got on Google and she's like, where can we find tapered candles? Hobby Lobby is said to have them. And uh, they're closed on Sundays. And because she didn't get to come down Saturday... She came down Sunday. RJ and roommate, they were working. Okay, roommate just supervises. Just saying. Gives direction and RJ does it. Because roommate's dad used to be a mechanic and he grew up doing it with his father. And then when roommate came along, it was just passed down. So, um... They were three or four generation deep in uh, mechanics. So, yeah, roommate does it for fun, or in this case, to help RJ. But we're older and we're heavier set, and yeah, RJ can fix it himself if he just knows what to do. So, roommate tells him what to do. Um, anyway, so... We had a nice weekend. Um, Saturday, I got some more stuff done. RJ came down, you know, did that. And then um, Sunday, of course, his girlfriend was here and him. And we had lasagna, and then I, I made a big pan of lasagna for Saturday. And then the kids didn't come but RJ, but RJ still wanted it. So we ate some of it. And then I reheated it for Sunday and made <laughs> RJ's girlfriend got to eat leftover lasagna. <laughs> And then yesterday I put a roast in the crock pot because it's sold out. So anyway, it just a nice fun weekend. Finished up my Christmas shopping other than the tapered candles. Uh, RJ did get the truck running. It's not running smoothly. And after a while, it'll just shut off. After like 20, 30 minutes, it just shuts off like you turn the key off. And they can't figure out if something's overheating or if something's dirty or clogged or what. It is running better than it has in the last two years. So, and it's running better than it was when RJ brought it down here. But something is making it just shut off like a switch. So, um, yeah, it's just a really old truck. But if he gets it running, he is going to put it up for sale because he, he doesn't need it. He now, because it's been out of commission so long, um, he's going to do two, uh, he's going to, he's got two trucks, he's got the silver truck and then the rodeo truck. So he's going to get rid of this one because it's just costing him money for insurance and all that stuff. And if he can get it running, get it going good, it's worth about $5,000 and he wants to buy a car, a little putt putt get around car for his girlfriend. She does not own a car. And he's going to make her put insurance on it. It will be up to her to, to pay the insurance. And, 
you know, go from there. But she'll have her own means to get to and from work and not rely on her mom's vehicles. So, anyway. All right. That's the whole week. That is what we've worked on. Um, I'm hoping to have my little gnome finished and that little birds of a feather cow finished. And then if I can get them done before the next kit arrives, I'm going to work to get done some of the other things like the sweater for me and the uh, Christmas topper. I want to try and get those things done. And then the reversible poncho thing, I'm going to try and get it done. We will see. I'm going to push through and I want to get those things done. I'm trying to clean out the basket because I have this spot over here by the chair and the plant here has died. It's a tropical plant and there just isn't enough sunshine in the house. So I want to put my knitting basket there. I got to clean it out. That means I got to get projects done because it's overflowing. So anyway, that is it for this week. Y'all. Oh, there you are. Uh, I need to go and get ready for work and I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Oh, and thanks for watching. Of course.